Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and today I'm going to answer the questions you guys have been asking me about the Jacker Explorer 1000 and the Blue Eddy 1500 and 2400 models. I've been filling a lot of questions, especially about the Jackery of what's the use? What can it power? What can I use it for? And I thought I was kind of clear about that in my original review video, but some of you want to see demonstrations of things it can power. Uh, I get asked every single day, can it power an air conditioner? Can it power a heater? Can it power an air conditioner? So we're going to take the Jacker Explorer 1000 around to my camp today to the different RVs, and we're going to show you guys exactly what you can do with the Explorer 1000. Now, I've already answered these questions for both of these products, because whenever I did the original review of the 1500 and 2400, in both cases, I showed them powering things such as my RV or a microwave or an air conditioner. So what I'm going to show you today about the Jacker Explorer 1000 also applies to the two Blue Eddies because they all have that 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter and it can run 11 1200 watts without much of a problem at least for three to five minutes so let's go ahead and take the jackery explorer 1000 around to the different camps here and we're going to show it in use and i'll let you decide in the end if you think this is a good value or not first order of business refrigerators i probably get asked more about refrigerators than anything else now, we don't have any regular residential refrigerators here in our RVs. We usually have propane refrigerators, absorption refrigerators, in other words, or we use these 12 volt compressor refrigerators. Now, this is a brand new model from Iceco, which is one of the biggest manufacturers of refrigerators in the world. This is the JP42, they call it the eye cooler. I'm currently reviewing this. I've been running this outside in the 100 degree Arizona heat for almost two weeks now in freezer mode. So I have the compressor on max and this thing is set at zero degrees Fahrenheit. It's been no problem whatsoever, even with the direct sunlight, 100 degree heat, keeping this at about two degrees Fahrenheit. That's how good this refrigerator compressor is and how, good, how well it's insulated. But I'm always asked constantly, if I have a 12 volt fridge, what power station should I get? Well, first of all, you have to have something that has a 12 volt regulated output. These refrigerators require a certain amount of voltage to work. If you go usually below 11 volts, they stop working. This has a setting on it which lets you adjust the three different voltages where it will shut down. It's, it's a protection to prevent you from killing your starter battery in your vehicle. If you have this plugged into your vehicle, the voltage gets too low where you can't start it. This thing shuts off and it figures it's better, better off to ruin your food than to leave you stranded in the middle of nowhere. Now the Jackery does regulate around 13.2, 13.3 volts, which is perfect for a compressor style refrigerator. That means no matter how far the battery gets drained in your Jackery, or your Blue Eddy 1500 or 2400, because that is the same feature, no matter how far the battery gets drained, it will power your refrigerator until this completely dies. If you buy another power station, like the Blue Eddy AC50, that little 500 watt hour that everybody seems to be in love with, that does not work well with a refrigerator like this. So avoid getting the cheap products. If you're gonna pay three, four, five hundred dollars for a refrigerator, at least get a decent power station to run it. And this thing will run it for a really long time. So let's figure out right now, I've had this unplugged for a couple of minutes, so I'm sure the compressor will kick on as soon as I fire it up. Now this is powered by 12 volts, not the inverter, 12 volts. So just like in your vehicle, RV, van, truck. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the inverter on. It's already plugged in down here. I have it set to zero on maximum cooling. I kick it on. Let's see how many watts it takes while it's running. You can see right now it is actually showing five degrees Fahrenheit. Now it takes a moment for the compressor to kick on. Do note this is set on max, not eco. So it's running the compressor at 100%. Okay, it took about three minutes, but now the Jacker Explorer 1000 is showing about 52 watts. Only 52 watts to run a 42 quart compressor refrigerator. So for those of you that don't understand power in watts, what's the big deal about only pulling 52 watts? Well, your household refrigerator, your typical Energy Star refrigerator will pull two to 300 watts while the compressor's running. And it usually cycles on and off. Same with something like this. This will usually run about 20 minutes an hour. Although out here in the direct sunlight of 100 degree temperature, this compressor runs a lot. It's probably on most of the time. Okay, so let's say worst case scenario, we're gonna pull 52 watts an hour for 12 hours a day. That means this will cycle on and off every half an hour to keep the temperature at zero degrees. Now it's gonna, it's gonna be on more during the day and a lot less at night because it does drop to the low 50s here at night. So this refrigerator has no issue keeping that temperature 
since it is a cooler too, it's very well insulated. So let's do the math. The Explorer 1000 has about 935 usable watt hours of battery capacity. You take 935 watt hours divided by 52, and that'll tell you the number of hours that the refrigerator can run with the compressor on. Double that number, and that answer will give you exactly how long will this refrigerator run off the Explorer 1000 without needing to be charged. Now, obviously, on a sunny day like this, you throw some solar panels on this Jackery, and it'll run the refrigerator indefinitely. We get enough sun here in Arizona, you throw up probably 100 watt or 200 watts on this Jackery, and it will power this refrigerator forever, as long as you got sunny days. So the answer is, this refrigerator will run approximately 36 hours off this Jackery Explorer 1000 on its maximum power deep freeze mode. Now, if you run this as a regular refrigerator and put it up to like 45 degrees and run on eco mode, you can get a lot longer, probably four or five days off of one Jack Rick Explorer 1000 charge. Now, if you're camping, that's awesome. You can go almost a whole week. Even if you don't have solar panels, you can go almost a whole week on this. And remember, you could charge this with your vehicle. So if you do start running out of power, you don't have solar panels, you can plug this sucker right into your car, truck, van, or RV and charge it back up. And if you're like me and you have a UTV, you can throw this refrigerator in the back, fill it with food and drink, plug it into the 12 volt in your UTV and keep this thing charged. Now, obviously you wanna take the Jackery too because you don't wanna kill the battery in your UTV. You also don't wanna kill the battery in your car, truck, or van. So what's the real value here in the Jackery? Saving your batteries because you really don't wanna be running a refrigerator off of a lead acid battery that you use to start your vehicle or your UTV. You'll probably get stranded. Get something like this, run it for four or five days, no problem. Now, can you see the value? Let's go on to the next challenge. Now, the next question I'm asked all the time, and I find this really odd, will the Jackery run a small electric heater? Now, for those of you who don't understand electricity, electric heaters consume a lot of power. They will kill the biggest battery system you can put in an RV. Unless you have a very, very, very large battery supply, you really don't wanna run electric heaters for more than a very short period of time. Now I can see maybe you wanna just run a heater for a half an hour to warm up a corner of your vehicle or warm up your bathroom or warm up your pet or warm up your hands or something like that. But you're not gonna get a lot of runtime on any portable power station with an electric heater. You're much better off using propane or a diesel heater. And that's another question I get asked all the time. Will this thing run a diesel heater? Absolutely yes. As long as the power supply for the 12 volt requires under 120 watts or 10 amps. You can actually use the Explorer 1000's 12 volt port to run your diesel heater. But everyone asks about the electric heaters. So this is the electric heater I keep in my van. It's a 600 watt halogen heater. It does 300 watts on low or 600 watts on high. Now I only use this when I'm plugged in to shore power. However, I'm gonna demonstrate here that you can actually power an electric heater off of a larger Jackery. So let's go ahead and turn it on. I have it on maximum so you can see both halogens are lit up and it should be pulling somewhere around 650 watts. So there you have it, around 660 watts on high. So your big question is, how long can I run this heater off this Jackery? Well, 935 usable watt hours, divide that by 650, and it tells you the number of hours it's gonna run. About an hour and a half on high. Now that doesn't sound very long, it's not gonna keep you warm all night long. You can put it on low and 300 watts of heat is pretty good in a small space. If you just need to warm up a little corner, 300 watts might be all you need. And in that case, this will run about three hours. That's not too bad if it's emergency heat. Now I wouldn't try to do this every day. Again, you're better off with a propane or a diesel heater. They're just far more efficient. So for this next challenge, let's take the Explorer 1000 into the Hobo Crypt, otherwise known as Space Station Mirror, my road trek. All right, we're now inside the van. You guys have seen this before with the Blue Eddy, but this time I'm gonna do it with the Explorer 1000. We're gonna go ahead and use the Explorer 1000 to run my microwave. Now this is a 1000 watt microwave, a little bit of water in there. Let's go ahead and fire it up and see what happens. Surprise, surprise, it's running exactly 1000 watts. When I was running this off the EcoFlow Delta, it said 1200 watts. But here on the Jackery, it's well within in specifications. Now it does say right there, 1150 watts is what it should pull. But for some reason on a Jackery, it's showing only 1000 watts. 
hey, that's fine. I have it running full power. So how long could I run my 1,000 watt microwave on the Jackery Explorer 1000? Well, it takes 1,000 watts. This has a 900 watt hour usable battery. So almost an hour, just under an hour, I could run my microwave. Now, if you're out in the wilderness, you're off the grid, you don't want to run a loud, noisy generator, say it's quiet hours. Say you're at a campground or a campsite, it's after 10 o'clock at night, which most campgrounds don't allow you to run a generator after 10 o'clock at night. You can use a Jackery or a Blue Eddy to run your microwave, cook some food late at night, make some popcorn or whatever, don't have to turn your generator on. Not only that, you can recharge this the next day using solar for free. You don't have to wear down your expensive generator or burn gasoline, you know, which is, it's loud, it stinks. I know it's cheap right now, but it might not be cheap forever. This is a long-term investment. You get something like this, you can use this for years and years, charge it off of solar for free. Now, don't you see the value in that? Okay, now here's the big one. This is the one that people ask me the most. Can you run a small air conditioner off the Jackery Explorer 1000? I'm doing it right now. <laughs> it's running on high cool. Now this is a 5000 BTU frigid air. It does have a soft start built in, so it's great for generators. It will ramp up the power to maximum slowly so that it doesn't spike your generator and cause it to stall out. That's also good for power stations because it doesn't spike the power station to its maximum. It brings it up gradually over a couple of minutes. Now this air conditioner, if you go to the Frigidaire website, it says it runs 490 watts on maximum. And guess what? So there it is, it says it's running 501 watts. So what does that mean for run time? Because everybody wants to know how long will the air conditioner last? Well, let's do the math together again. Let's all say it together. The Explorer 1000 has 935 watt hours of usable battery. The air conditioner takes 500 watts. So you divide 500 by 935, you get almost two hours. It's just under two hours of runtime on this particular air conditioner. Now, if you have a 6,000 BTU, it's probably gonna pull about 600 watts. I'm actually gonna be replacing this air conditioner in a few days with a 6,000 BTU Energy Star. It only uses 50 watts more. So it's gonna be 550 watts to get 20% more cooling power. Plus it blows more air and it's quieter. So I'm finally gonna replace this. I had it for two years, I only paid like 130 bucks for it. If you guys are interested in the air conditioner, because every time I do a video mentioning this air conditioner, I get tons of people asking me about it. Go to hobotech.tv slash Amazon down to the comfort section, and you can get this exact same air conditioner. Now the price has went up since I bought it two years ago, but it's still a pretty good bargain. It's fully mechanical, it has built-in soft start, you can run it off an 800 watt generator, and I did videos on how I ran this off an 800 watt generator through a full summer. But if you don't want to run it off a loud, noisy generator, you can run it off your Jackery. Now, you can't really put enough solar into the Jackery to make it run indefinitely, but you can put enough solar into the Max Oak Blue Eddy 1500 or 2400 to run an air conditioner indefinitely during the daytime. And that's actually going to be an upcoming video because I have 1200 watts of solar now. All you got to do is get it all hooked up and I'll show you guys how I'm gonna run my new air conditioner off that solar. So stay tuned for that. Last but not least, I always get asked, can you run an electric cooker off a Jackery? Now you cannot run an induction cooktop because those usually require 1600 to 1800 watts. However, I have this Betty Crocker pizza maker that only takes about 1200 watts maximum while it's on and you can cook pizzas in it. It's got a non-stick surface. We make quesadillas in it. I make tater tots in it because I don't have an oven in the van. I bought this because I don't have an oven in the van. Now here in Heidi's RV, she has an oven and she's a great cook as you can tell. But I get asked a lot, can you use an electric cooker? Now this case, this Betty Crocker cooker, which I have on hobotech.tv slash Amazon, it's $35, $40 range, works absolutely perfectly on the Jackery. As soon as you plug it in, it turns on. So there's no on and off switch. You just plug it in and it works. Thor says hi. He's a happy kitty now that he doesn't have to share his space with Odin. Huh, you're a happy kitty now. Look at how nice he is. He, he would bite my face off before if I did this to him. But now he's no longer stressed out. He's happy. 1150 watts. Now the Jackery will run this indefinitely. Even though this is only a thousand watt inverter, it will run 1150 watts. I've ran this for 20 minutes and it didn't stall. It didn't quit. 
So just because it only has a thousand watt inverter doesn't mean you're limited to a thousand watts. The Explorer 1000 actually has a pretty good inverter that lets you go over the limit sometimes. Your next question, how about an Instant Pot? Now this is a six quart model. So it has a thousand watt heater in it. Let's see, is it gonna work on the Jackery? There's nothing in it, so I only want to run it for a minute with nothing in it. I just want to show you how much power it pulls. Well, looky what we have here. It's only pulling 800 watts. The fact it's only pulling 800 watts while the heater element is on means it usually only takes 10 to 15 minutes for the element to heat up and create pressure. And then after it's pressurized, it only kicks on and off every couple of minutes. So you could literally make a two or three hour roast in your Instant Pot without any problem whatsoever on the Jackery Explorer 1000. So there you have it. You have your answers as to what the Explorer 1000 will run. Now, is it worth it? The current price on the Explorer 1000 is $999. There are no specials going on right now. So that's the normal price. If you think it's worth it to be able to do all that stuff off the grid, there's a link below in the description. It'll take you to the Jackery store. And there's also a link to Amazon. Now, I do suggest you get it off the Jackery store because not only am I an affiliate of Jackery, but sometimes you'll get special coupons and special offers from the Jackery store you won't get on Amazon. And don't forget, everything I showed you also works with both of the 1500 and 2400 watt hour Blue Eddies. They all do the same thing that the Explorer 1000 does. Now, these are much bigger batteries, they're much heavier, and they're more expensive. This is the cheapest bang for your buck with the regulated 12 volt and a thousand watt hour battery that'll do everything that I just showed you. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you learned something, don't forget to give me a thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. And from now until May 21st, Jackery is having a Memorial Day sale. So you can get all four of their power stations at a significant discount. The links for that are below in the description. And that includes the coveted Jackery Explorer 1000 with a $100 off coupon. So that's something they haven't offered since the day of launch. So if you want to get one with a discount, you better do it between now and May 21st. Because after that, the deals are gone. Oh, and after two years, I finally decided to update the outro on my channel, seeing that I pretty much do more product reviews, more off-gritty type stuff, make it a little more user-friendly, a little more exciting, because nobody's reading my outro anyway. People still ask me, do I have a Patreon? It's mentioned right there, I have a Patreon. Uh, we have a Facebook group, a very popular Facebook group, the Hobo Tech Crew. So you can come over there and ask your solar or power station related questions. I also have a Twitter account. That's not really popular. I don't really monitor that. I also have an Instagram. Again, I don't really use it that much, but I do have Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and don't forget hobotech.tv. You can get all the information from all my videos there. I have a blog. Sign up for the blog. Every time I post a video such as this one, I manually create a blog that goes out to everybody on my mailing list and it sends it right to your inbox. You don't even have to go on YouTube to look for the latest video. Come right to your email. So let me know what you think about the new outro. If you like the old outro better or you like this new one, I think this new one's a little more exciting. It shows me in my new side-by-side -side out at Lake Havasu City. Uh, Stan did the drone footage for that one. It was a lot of fun. So make sure you watch it, check it out, and we'll see you guys next time. Golf Gun, Z Foxfire.